Hi, this is Sandhya Mendonca and you're listening to my podcast Spotlight with Sandhya. Writers, scientists, artists, business leaders, politicians, you will find them and many other engaging people right here talking about what they do and how it impacts the world. The guest on today's episode is SG Vasudev. He is one of India's leading artists and a beloved and respected figure in the cultural fraternity. He is one of the founders of the Cholamandal Arts Village in Chennai and an enthusiastic enabler of many cultural ventures. He is proof that creativity is not defined by age or physicality. He is 82 years young and had three different exhibitions in three different cities. All this in just the first three months of this year. Vasu, I would like to know more about the themes of your recent exhibitions. But let's start with the theme that inspired you for a long time. The tree of life of Riksha. Would it be right to call it anthropomorphic? Yeah, you can call it that way. It was very, very accidentally I came to this tree of life. You know, I was painting fantasy series, landscape, fantasy and things like that. But then, you know, I brought tree to the middle in, the, in my landscape, fantasy landscapes. And when I had a show in Delhi, one of my friends came to the ex- exhibition and he said, he asked me, is, is, it, is it tree of life? I had not heard about tree of life. It was 1974 or something like that. And then I went and bought myself a book on tree of life. Then I read the thing and how it inspired different craftsmen and artists of different religions. How tree of life has influenced these people in different religions. So then I studied uh, Indian philosophy about tree of life, Kalpa Vriksha and things like that. Then one, one advantage I had was not only the philosophy of the tree of life was interesting, but it also helped me technically to solve a lot of problems. How like, is that? Like vertical, horizontal, squares, any size, you know, you could do it. And then you could, you could start from uh, symbolism to abstraction. I mean, you can call it Vriksha, tree of life or Vriksha, I call it. I, I denize the name to Vriksha. And uh, so that, that's how it works. And it so happened that uh, I came across this uh, Vriksha several years later through poems of Bindre, D.R. Bindre, one of our very well-known Kannada poet, when I met him in Darwar, where I had my show. And uh, in 1967, I think, 67, yes. And uh, then I came across one of the poems of his called Kalpa Vriksha Vrindavana. That inspired me to do a lot of drawings and paintings. And I was young, energetic, at the same time reacting to some of these things. Though he wrote that poem after his wife died, I didn't take it that way. I took it in a very different way. And so then, so, so it so happened that, you know, I was art director for Vamsha Vriksha, a film which Girish Karnat and uh, Vivi Karant made. Again, Vriksha. So when I, des- when I to design the, the poster, huge poster, in Majestic Circle, Tempe Gorda Circle, then I used the tree symbol. I used the characters here and there. So, Karant said, Vasudev, you have painted a modern picture in the, in, the, in the surrounding. That's how it was, you know. It was a very interesting thing for me to do. So, what exactly does the Vriksha, the tree of life, symbolize for you? For me, you know, it is sort of a, you know, we, we have this uh, theory that birth and death continues in Indian philosophy. And a tree comes out of the earth, it yields, it dies, again it starts sprouting. That's one thing. The other thing is that it, it also represents sort of a sexuality, which was very interesting for me to go through. And I was also very young at the time, you know, I was only in my 20s, 20s, early 20s. So it was important for me to go through all these things. And it helped me a lot to understand the Indianness in Vriksha. And it also inspired your subsequent series, Maituna. You know, there's a lot of eroticism in it, but somehow it seems to begin with Riksha. In fact, um, it is a combination of Riksha and Maituna in many ways. Maituna actually came from my visit to Kajraho and Konara as a student of art. And I found a lot of erotic sculptures there, and which I thought was very interesting for me to use. And I use them both in Riksha series as well as Maituna series. You know, like I and, and I, I don't title my works pinpointed to one. I do series of paintings, and I call series 
Mithunas, Siris, Rikshas, like that, you know. So it was very interesting that. You know, I have, did you face any kind of, um, you know, uh, objection? Because people these days seem to be so eager to take offense for anything. And there's such a lot of eroticism. I personally find it very beautiful and very lyrical in most ways. Did anybody at all in society take offense at this display of eroticism? No, nobody objected to it. So? Nobody objected to it. And, uh, you know, I just did. Of course, uh, my, my paintings were not like uh, showing the nudity, you know, but nakedness. No, it was completely a different kind of nudity. Like Indianness, Indian Indian sculptures, you can't call them nudes, you know. You call them erotic, but at the same time, very beautifully done. And I first personally feel that artist art has to be beautiful. This is my theory. And the ugliness is not necessary to come into art at all. I agree. There's enough of that around us, so we don't need to bring it into art. And you've done series such as Humanscapes, Earthscapes, uh, Theatre of Life. How did these themes in- come about? These, you know, from from one series to another series, it leads for me. There is a line which goes through in all my series. That is important for me. For example, Earthscape. I came to Bangalore in 1988 and then I met quite a lot of people, activists, filmmakers, activists, you know, writers. And uh, then I, I, I thought the Earthscape, you know, this tree, what I was worshipping before as a tree of life was not just that. It became a different thing altogether for me. So, you know, how, how people, you know, remove the trees and how they cut them to pieces and, you know, they cut themselves also. So, these sort of a series led me to Earthscapes. And uh, Humanscape came to me when I was in 1992. I was, in, uh, I was invited to Calcutta for an art camp. And uh, when Ayodhya took place, you know about that Ayodhya thing took place. And so at that time, I did a painting of uh, a man in agony. So inspired by what happened at the Ram Janambhumi, Ram Janambhumi. the breaking down of the yeah, Babri yeah, Masjid. Babri Masjid. Right. So that, that made me continuously do a landscapes. And theater of life, it is very funny because I, I have a small farm just outside Bangalore. My father was an agriculturist. And so he gave me a piece of land and I built a small cottage there. When I was painting there, I used to see by 2 o'clock in the afternoon, villagers were all sitting in front of the TVs. They were more, more bothered about watching the TV entertainment than doing their work. So I, I put a number of heads and an idiot box in front of them in, in my own way and painted them. Then I never got, got that idea of theater of life at that time in the title. So then coming back to Bangalore, to city, I was meeting my present wife, Amu Jose. She's a journalist and a writer, activist. And uh, she coined the title Theater of Life. Why don't you call it Theater of Life series? One thing is because I was involved in theater, cinema, literature, I connected myself very easily with Theater of Life. A lot of stories which I had read or I had designed the sets came back to me. And so Theater of Life series went on. I found a number of things like, you know, masks. People wear masks. And really speaking, people do wear masks. In real life? In real life. It's very, very difficult to know a person unless you peel these layers of masks, you know. That's what I felt. It's not just the actors wearing masks, but even us, we are. So we, we all, you know, we, 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 at one point of time, I thought, when I was making fun of the people sitting in front of TV, I was thinking of myself later. I'm also part of it, you know. True. And you see the news readers, whether it's BBC or CNN or anything, EDTV, they're all same expression. What they say, saying is different, maybe different, but it's all same expression. Right. So that's how it's all, it all came. Let's talk about your current series. I mean, three in a row. Uh, what can you tell me the themes of these? See, the thing is that in Delhi, uh, all, all of them were curated exhibitions. And Delhi was curated by one art historian, Emil Johnny. And he said that there is a new gallery coming up in Gurgaon. I want you to show there. So I said, you can come and select my works. That's how he came to my farm studio and selected the works. And that's one exhibition. 
The other exhibition was in Kolkata, Kolkata Culture for Culture for Creativity. That again was a curated exhibition by Nandini Malviya, art historian from Bangalore, and she said that we should have just your drawings, what you have done over the twenty years, and then your tapestries, what you have done twenty years. selected tapestries. So I had this show in in Chennai, my show of collages, which I only curated myself, and. Uh, so there were about 30 works exhibited in collage i thought you know chennai i feel is part of me you know it's uh, as i studied there and i created my own space in chennai so i always feel that though bangalore is my birthplace chennai is the place where i where i really nurtured you know my being and becoming an artist and you know, some importance is there in my life chennai you went you were born in mysore And and then how did you end up in Chennai? See, I was born to I was born in Mysore because uh, my mother is from Mysore. My mother's father is he was peshkar of the temple Chamundi Hills for forty years, and so every summer vacation, every 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 holidays, he used to go to Mysore from Bangalore. So that was one of our outings. And my father is from Bangalore, and uh, and I had a lot of connection with Mysore because. not only my my mother's father was peshkar of temple chamundi chamundi shivaraj temple in chamundi hills but my mother's grandfather he was an ayurvedic doctor at the same time he was a painter and a sculptor and uh, of course traditionally they he would cut uh, the the cardboard shapes and then cre- recreate the entire mysore dasara exhibition mysore dasara procession and things like that so my mother i believe used to be volunteer at that time so she brought this element of uh, you know creativity into into the in her in her own way when we had dasara time you know she used to create every dasara time we used to have palace and all these sort of things painted and you know my mother used to do that and so it it, it was very helpful for me to know that but whatever it was it was very difficult for me to convince my parents that i want to take to art as a profession as a profession and my father said you can you can be of help to me he was an agriculturist and he had the two land the two pieces of agriculture land and uh, two estates and uh, so he thought i would be of help to him in fact i was asked to i was asked taken by him to agricultural college where he studied in bangalore a hebard and uh, there of course my marks was not up to the mark so the principal said it is impossible sir your son cannot get into the college <laughs> and so somebody told my parents that let him do bsc physics chemistry mathematics which i hated but anyway one had to have tuition for all these subjects i had to go through but meanwhile i took to cartooning caricatures and cartoons david lo and rk lakshman inspired me and uh, one of my cartoons was the caricature of david lo david or uh, not david what's his name uh, um laurel hardy laurel okay, hardy laurel hardy a hardy passed away in 1955 56 or something like that so i did that caricature of his and sent it to tainado one of the kannada newspapers at that time reading kannada paper and that published on a sunday it got published then i went and met the editor editor was rumale uh, chandrabasavaya at that time he was a painter very well known painter now at that time he was editing the Uh, the paper and he said continue maadi yenen martira maadi we will publish it whenever it's necessary so i went on doing some concreteers and whoever who may like and uh, then i kicked it to political cartoons but it was 9 it was uh, 60s early 60s that i came across one art historian called g venkatachalam he was one of the uh, first generation art, art historian he had he used to come to bangalore from delhi He was a fist, and um, so he saw some of my works and said, "You must join an art school, sir." Then how could how could I, you know, convince my parents about it? He said, "I will talk to them," and uh, he could convince my parents somehow. And my parents said, "Okay, Chennai is very very close by. It's very not necessary, not not too far." And my cousin was staying staying there, so I could go and stay with him. And that's how I joined Chennai College School of Arts and Craft. In 1960, I was about 18, 19 at that time, and uh, for me it was like heaven, you know. 
Mm, I'm sure. Getting away, getting away from this sort of a subject which I didn't like. So did you complete the uh, I did, course? I did. In okay. fact, I didn't complete my BSc, but I finally took the exam, but complete didn't complete. But anyway, so Chennai School of Arts and Crafts is very important. When I say craft, it's very important because Panikar, who was principal at that time in the school, of course, when he read the letter of Geometra Chalam, he said, I don't go by letters. I want you to do the exam. And uh, the exam was like, you know, one, one could do a drawing from photograph, but to see a model and draw, it's not so easy. So I had to do all those sort of things and I somehow I got, got through with distinction and then he admitted me to the school. But then, you know, craft is something which, is, which, is, which was going on in the school. Craft section. We had batik, ceramics, enameling, woodwork, carpentry, all these sort of things. Lovely teachers to teach all these things. And Principal Panikar had allowed us to walk into any section one wanted to. And so one worked in ceramic and all these sort of things, even at the time, College of Art. So that was a very important thing for me in my life. And we considered, you know, in Chennai particularly, craft is very little, very thin line divides between craft and art. Do you consider people who built Mahabalipuram, Kajuraho, craftsmen or artist? Very difficult, very, very difficult. So it is with that intention one worked one's work. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a, it took a step in that direction. And it also helped, you know, Padikar to realize at one point of time, in fact, he called some of us and uh, asked us in 1962 or 63, somewhere, sometime around that, what will you do after finishing the course, college? We all said, take up jobs, sir. That no, that's the least thing I think an artist should do, taking up jobs. It'll take away his time. So best is you experiment something, extend your art to craft and see whether there is any possibility. So one of the crafts was very close to us, which was batik, like, like painting, you know. So some of us learned batik in the School of Arts and did batik. And we had an exhibition in 1960-64 and it was a sellout, almost sellout. We had done saris, dress materials, wall hangings and all those sort of things, about 25-30 of us. That gave us the idea that we should have a place of our own. Not place of our own to work, but place to live also around that. A so community. Community. And uh, then we pooled whatever resources we had, bought 10 acres of land outside Chennai. It was cheaper at that time on the way to Mahabalipuram on the sea coast. And we called it Cholamandal Artist Village. And it was completely not, not for art's sake we started this village for, for a living. Many people mistake Cholamandal as a school of art. It is not. It is only for making a little bit of money, we created this village. So it's for working artists who use the space for their livelihood yeah. and habitation. Yeah. How so did the name come from? Name came from, you know, Cholas were the people who ruled that part of Earth. Right. Part of Earth. And they were great connoisseurs of art. And so we thought we should have name like Chola Mandal. Instead of Marth, Chola Mandal is Earth. Chola or the a nasty, so called it Chola Mandal, instead of calling any political names, you know, which we didn't want to enter, it became very interesting for us too. And so, till now, we have not touched any of government money. We have not applied for grants from the government, nothing. Because we wanted to, everything has to develop from scratch. And we did everything from scratch. How many artists? Initially, initially, there were about uh, 25 artists who moved with us, all of us moved into the village. And uh, then it reduced a little bit. An increased reduction, everything was happening now and then. And uh, every artist who, who works there has a piece of land. He has bought the piece of land for himself. So there is a studio he builds and whatever way, each one, the they way they want to do it, they, they can do it. Which I'm, I oppose myself. I was, uh, I, I said that uh, we should never have ownership of the land, but we should have uh, sort of, uh, you know, contract uh, for about 25 years, an extendable sort of a thing, you know. But many people didn't agree with me, and so we had to sell the land to individual artists. For 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 which I think today one feels re one regrets because quite a few, some of them have sold their land to some business people, outsiders, 
they have come and built their houses also oh, so that's it's not, a tragedy it's not it's a, it's not tragedy but you know one thing is uh, i remember panikar talking to a journalist in 1967 i think and the journalist asked him i was there at in his in his, in his house and the journalist asked him so do you think sir all the 25 artists from you to who you have bought here are all going to make something great in their life he said no out of which six artists if they can do something is a great thing so more than six have achieved that one two how long the artist village would last last long panika said one generation it's an experiment can never say about next generation this generation i can believe i can trust them but next generation i do not know whether they are going to be artists or not artists i do not know the children so both they have achieved so it has it has gone on and the art as an artist village but in a very different way it's not the same thing like what it was in 60s and 70s and till even 80s it has changed a lot now the scene has changed and uh, naturally it is uh, you know the, the new generation they have got their own ideas and they want to do something but on the whole it is maintained by the artist community completely run by the artist community of art okay i think that's quite a testament to the vision of all of you who were the co-founders yeah along with panikar yeah. and he seems to have been quite a pragmatic person because he had no expectations or emotional attachment saying it has to last forever it he rightfully said it was an experiment yeah. and the experiment has survived thanks to the people like you and other artists who kept it going i suppose yeah, yeah. so it also um brings me to this um you know next uh, point that i want to discuss from arts to crafts to different forms of arts you've been part of um, many artistic ventures right you've been um, in films doing sets you've been part of theater you've designed book covers you worked with uh, luminaries like bb karant girish karnad ek ek ramanujam and many others so why do you think it's important to have this kind of a cross pollination you see i was always interested in uh, literature particularly poetry and uh, kannada was my second language while i was studying in bangalore and uh, i was reacting to poetry of various art various writers but it so happened accidentally i met uh, girish karnad in 1963 i think he came to chennai from oxford oxford university press he became gen- assistant manager or something like that then so it so happened that uh, through him i came to a lot of kannada literature he exposed me to the best of kannada literature and of course english literature i also but kannada literature particularly he was uh, influenced by kirtinath kurtukoti art kannada literary critic and publisher like uh, gb joshi and people like that so he he had he had seen he had shown me he showed me the books which they had brought out called nadag bandidari for which i did the cover design because jeevi joshi asked me to do the cover design for the book and uh, it was written by kirtinath kurtkoti on all the subjects theater cinema art lip poetry everything and uh, he recreated the entire new generation literature which was not the case earlier earlier we were thinking of somebody like kana krishna rao or tara subrao great writers i am consider them also as great writers but then he demolished all those sort of things he created completely different sort of uh, you know new new wave writers like anantamurthy karnad and people like that like ramanujan and through girish i met quite a few people like ramanujan for that matter i met him and uh, he asked me to do a cover design for his first kannada collection of Kannada collection of poems, which I did, and I did continuously afterwards about three or four cover designs for his books, and uh, then he introduced me to B. V. Karanth. So Karanth asked me to do designs for theatre, which I did. I felt that as an artist, you can handle anything, and it's imp- it's very important for uh, one to react to things, you know, around you. And I f- I feel that you know I am part of all these things, you know. whether it's literature whether it's poetry whether it is it's a drama theater whatever it is and then it so happened in uh, anantamurthy had written a novel called samskara which uh, 
manuscript Girish got. He read that manuscript and gave it to me. I read it and I told Girish that it's a fantastic thing to make a film. He said that exactly. I also felt the same thing and hopefully we will make somebody someday. So we we really worked towards that and then we got Pattabhi Reddy, who was part of the Madras Bears group in Chennai, to direct and produce the film. We worked with him and I did our direction for the film and I went and saw it for the location, selected the location and uh, chose some of the actors, everything. You know, it's a sort of a, I felt that my aim was to make a film like Satyayitri in Kannada. That was, you know, the aim. Whether it, we touched that aim, it's a different matter, but then we did that thing. You know? The story itself was a very strong story. Anathamurthy's short novel. So, anyway, I was told, I was told by Satyayitri's art director, I believe, he, he told Girish that uh, he who is, you asked him who is art director for this film. So Girish told me that, you know, that means, you know, you are recognized as art director by those people. You know? So, I was very happy to do it. But one thing is, you know, for me as an artist, in painting, I was going towards abstraction. But when it comes to film, I had to go for realism. That was a very important thing, you know. But it, and nevertheless, I think that realism has helped me, helped me a lot to, to understand what the thing is. And then, of course, uh, after that film was over, second film was Vamsha, Vamsha Vriksha, which Karan taunted uh, Girish, to, Girish and me to join him. We did the film and after that, I told Girish that it's enough for me and I don't want to get involved in film really. Why is that? That was my next question anyway. So, why did you decide you had had because, enough of Because I tell you what, whatever you do, film is a director's medium. He may do everything as a director, part of the film, but the director's medium. Finally, director gets the name. And I did not want to waste my time doing all these things and not giving up almost my painting. See, one film means one year gone. We can't do any painting at that time. So I wanted to carry on with my painting. That's very important for me. And so I, so I told Girish, Girish asked me several times to do the art direction for several films. I said no. I, I told him that I will do anything you want outside, like title cards or publicity material. I will do everything, but not as art director. For not be part of the crew and go around no. living a, with... Them. It's a different part, you know, the game altogether. I'm sure. You feel, you feel outside, no, you don't feel that sort of thing. When, once you're inside, you know what exactly how... Yeah, it, it takes over your whole life. Not only life, it's a... It's a sort of a, you know, you have to work with different kinds of people who have no understanding whatsoever about other things, you know. They, 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 anyway, it's okay. It's an experience also. Absolutely. And I think it, like you said, it formed a lot of, uh, it gave you a lot of inspiration and it formed you into a, can I say, a better artist because you could draw inspiration from all the sufferings also that you faced apart from the (laughs) creativity that you enjoyed. So I, you know, um, though you say you didn't like working with different sides of people, I know you do love working with different artists. In fact, you're a person who has nurtured and fostered the artistic community. You were responsible for um, bringing NGMA to Bangalore. You're one of the prime movers, I could say, the National Gallery of Modern Art in Bangalore. And uh, you have two other creations. One is Ananya Drishya and one is Art Park. So tell me about Ananya Drishya and how it came about. I was always interested in uh, doing something because, you know, you are part of society and you have to give back to society something, which uh, I was inspired by two personalities in my life. One is K.K. Hebar, another art, great artist, and Panikar, K.C.S. Panikar. Without them, I don't think Cholamandar would have come about without Panikar. Or Hebar, who created a fantastic movement in Karnataka art scene by instituting scholarship, introducing scholarship to send students to Baroda, Shantani Ketan, and places like that. So they did whatever they could. But I felt the need to continue whatever these people have done. In a way, I felt that uh, Art Park was a sheer accident. Both of them, Art Park as well as uh, Aran Nidrisha. When I was invited for, to address uh, a large gathering of uh, teachers and uh, principals of various schools of Bangalore, and many of them, they said, we don't have art in our school. 
then i he asked one or two of my artist friends and said shall we start something which can you know we can we can identify some schools and teach them there or we can also do a sort of a every month you know invite one artist and make a presentation and you know some sort of a thing you know which can art education and things like that so they agreed and we wanted funds for that and uh, i was part of ananya ananya is a cultural body which is already existing in bangalore which is existing in bangalore at that time uh, it, for for literature for uh, music and dance so i asked the secretary of the ananya where we could bring in visual art he said yes sir provided you get funds for it so i requested some business friends of mine business people and uh, one of them agreed to acquire all the work you know what we did was first of all we are uh, requested 70 bangalore artists to do two paintings each each one 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 square foot painting and we we sent them the canvases and they sent the paintings and these paintings were exhibited at vengata art gallery and the on kasturba road and then i knew that all of them would not sell so i requested one of my friend why don't you buy everything for a flat rate something he said how can i buy like that yaar yeah, i mean it's so it's so expensive that you can pay in installment so that's how so that went to create the corpus corpus and then you know we have been create we have been doing it with that corpus because we are carrying on with our work how many years has it been it has been almost about 9 to 10 years now and you must have presented several artists yeah, you've yeah. been doing it yeah, more than 100 artists fantastic and uh, art park is another thing which i felt the need because it, many people don't go to art galleries we don't have that thing in, in india you know some of if we go to the west the moment you go to the west first thing we go to the art gallery but in india we don't go to art gallery and then there is always a inhibition talking to an artist you know there is a fear so we thought we should solve both the things so that's how the art park came about. so we we all about 25 30 artists we meet once a month on a first sunday of every month and uh, between 11 and 5 we are there at a park and the sculpture right now it's sculpture garden next to ravindra kalakshetra culture department has given us that space and so we we just do drawings paintings things like that there and bring from the studios in their own studios you know some of the works and uh, we have also done we have also uh, uh, we also told the artist that we can give you five drawing sheets acid free drawing sheets you can do drawings but you should not sell for more than 1000 so to keep it affordable to the affordable people. to normal people whether i sell for my, my work at like in a gallery for 30 40 000 rupees that's a different matter but when i'm selected there as an artist participation of mine will be with 1000 rupees a drawing so that's how it is done and uh, so it has been going on like that we provide them lunch breakfast i mean sorry lunch and coffee tea everything and provide tables chairs and uh, which costs us about 40000 45000 rupees a program and so far part of the money was coming from the government part of the money was coming from the some of the in- industry industrialists and some people like that scary or care is on like that the other thing which i really was interested i was interested in ed- education in art you know university of bangalore didn't have an art department so i went and met the vice chancellor I, he was a registrar before that then he said it's not possible so when he became vice chancellor again i went and met, met him and he said hey, let me try nearly two years it took to convince us say, you know syndicate members then when he agreed, then they agreed he said asudev now it's your baby you find a you now run it i said i am only an artist i am not an academic person so we have to find somebody so we found uh, jay kumar who became the director of uh, visual art department and uh, it was a beautiful building has come about now and uh, students of visual art department have achieved great success in their life they got awards and things like that national award so that's one thing which is and then at, at the you must know that the fee structure of university is much much less compared to the private institutions so many people can afford that you know they they can pay 5000 rupees a year whereas the private institution they have to pay 25000 30000 rupees a year 
so it definitely is very affordable for aspiring artists from any Absolutely. part of india absolutely wonderful yeah you've been fostering artists you've been mentoring people i'm one of the people who's benefited from your advice and you you are very energetic and you know you infuses with your passion but i also know that you faced a great personal loss and you had to overcome it to continue with your art and it was something a bond that we both share because our life partner was also a person who shared the same interest in our profession so tell me how you overcame the loss of arnavas your first wife an artist I, i she was two years junior to me in the college she became a good friend and a good critic and a good wife so we started living in cholamandal we married in 1970 71 and then you were from different communities, communities did that cause a problem a Parsi, and i am from bangalore karnataka kannada speaking brahmin it was very difficult for me to convince my parents of course once we got married they liked her very much that's a different matter but anyway that was uh, she was a lovely person and uh, accepting that uh, you know that we we had to put off having our child for a very long time we had our first child in 1981 10 years later after our marriage because i didn't want to come in the way of her travels and things like that she was as an artist she had to do her own things and uh, 1983 84 she we came to the chat can cancer and she died in 1988 of course in spite of all the you know medication and things like that she couldn't survive and she gave me enough time to think of what is cancer and uh, how to adjust myself in the present situation of course when i i lost one not only my wife i lost a critic she was the first critic for me whenever i did some work the first thing is she would either criticize or appreciate it and that's one thing which i missed very much i moved to bangalore 1988 because my son was studying in the valley school in in the school krishna murthy foundation and so he joined the valley school in bangalore and so my parents my sisters were all in bangalore and so i could easily have a home for him easily and uh, then after she after we lost her i thought you know that i should do something for uh, cancer you know some institution foundation for cancer so some of my friends said no 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 don't do anything for cancer because a lot of people are giving money for cancer thing so why don't they institute some scholarship scheme for art students said, okay so that's how we started arnavas was the charities and i requested girish karna to be one of the trustees and shanta guhan another trustee from chennai and so we three of us we managed the trust and uh, whatever was sold from my painting i would give part of it to the trust that's how we started working on the trust until now more than 200 artists have benefited from the trust we have been giving scholarships and financial assistance to young artists from various schools colleges and uh, recommended from the principals of these institutions whether it is shantaniketan baroda or anywhere you know for that matter and some of them have become big names now already in the country and their works Are, are sold for at least ten times more than my paintings sell. Do you would you like to name them? Like uh, N. S. Harsha, for that matter. Harsha is an internationally known painter, and, and he uh, was one of the beneficiaries of the, of the beneficiary. trust. He was in he was in Kawa, Mysore, College of uh, Art. He was studying there, and I spotted him at that time, and I felt that he was a very good uh, artist, and he went to Baroda to study under Gulam Sheikh. and i encouraged him there then he continued that thing and gulam sheik recommended extra ex- extended scholarship for a year also for him like that you know so there are there are people like ravi kumar kashi shantamani all these people have all got scholarships so i am very happy that some of them they they do remember it very well some of them of course they have forgotten what about them that's got. human nature human nature and uh, people who remember they do are selling me something which is very interesting they are saying that sir you know we we got what we wanted at that time but now we can afford to give something back so do you think do you think we can have an exhibition of selected works and anything sold can go to the tra- trust something like that so we are been we have been planning uh, that one i am talking to some of the curators about it and so sometime in the next one or two years it will happen 
and once it happens you can we can we can create uh, better funds you know and uh, give more more money to the artists besides this you know in my own house in chennai uh, i built uh, a, a studio over my bedroom which is called studio arnavas which is uh, open for uh, artists writers to come and work for about 3 months or so at a time at in a stretch and uh, paying some whatever nominate it's all everything is found in that place so they can donate some money to the charities which is helpful to the community arts community so that then every year uh, we invite about half a dozen to eight artists to come to cholamandal and do workshop there for about a week or 10 days so that there can be sort of exchange of ideas from the artists there and artists elsewhere so it's like that going on and uh, the last three years we have also started residency program for a senior artist and we have got people like chandra bhattacharya veer munshi jay kumar and we are about to continue that because of covid we stopped for two years and now we have to continue that so this these people come to as a residency program for about 10 to 15 days they stay there they paint and uh, i am supported by one industrialist fortunately who has come forward in in chennai who is a big collector of art and uh, so uh, thanks to him you know i have been able to sort of do all these sort of activities also thank you vasu for joining this podcast and sharing your abundant energy and inspiration to our listeners if you'd like to know more about vasu's work on collages i'm posting a link to my blog in the bio of this podcast i hope you enjoyed this episode of spotlight with sandhya as much as i did do subscribe to the podcast i would love to hear from you until i'm back with another interesting guest take care and bye bye